we have been able to see both particle and wave like properties in the same run of the experiment. Hello friends, welcome to another Simplify story from the Raman Research Institute. You all must be remembering the Cheshire cat from the folklore Alice in Wonderland. Here at the Quick Lab, experimentalists have explained the quantum Cheshire cat effect. Let's listen in. In this experiment, we have achieved two main objectives. One of them is a new take on Bohr's complementarity principle and the other is what is called an unambiguous demonstration of the quantum Cheshire cat effect. Think of the famous Young's double slit experiment. So now what this says is that if you have information about which slit the photon took, then you will not be able to see the interference pattern. However, if you do not know anything about the slit uh, that the photon took, then you will see the interference pattern. So you do not see the particle and wave nature manifest itself simultaneously. This is called Bohr's complementarity principle. Let us go back to our childhood and think about one of the most famous fairy tales which is Alice in Wonderland. So here we have Alice who sees this cat in Wonderland where we have the cat without the grin and the grin without the cat. This is called the Cheshire cat. Now this is something which you can actually see in a real lab by using what is called weak measurements. Now several experiments have happened on quantum Cheshire cat so far. That is they have not been able to show the separation of the grin and the cat for the same run of the experiment. In our experiment what we do is we show a separation between the location of a photon and its polarization degree of freedom in two arms of an interferometer in the same run of the experiment by doing a joint measurement. To implement a joint weak measurement on a photon's uh, spatial and polarization degree of freedom, we use a Marxender interferometric setup. There are two input ports where we use a CW laser to stabilize the interferometer and we use another port to input a single photons generated from our single photon source. Now upon incidenting uh, on the first beam splitter of the Marxender interferometer, the single photon takes two different paths inside the interferometer, path A or path B. In path A, where we have the series of polarization optics like beam displacers and half wave plates to manipulate the polarization of the single photon. Uh, in path B, we have a glass wave plate which manipulates a uh, special degree of freedom of the photon. Upon recombination at the second beam splitter of the Marxander interferometer, we do the post selection and the photon is then uh, further evolves into the two different uh, fibers at the measurement stage. And these fibers are mounted on linear translation stages actuated by motorized actuator. Then uh, we do a coincidence measurement and based on that measurement, we can infer that the photon has seen operation that has happened in both in path A and path B, which has manipulated both the polarization and special degree, degree of freedom of the photon. Here you see the x and the y weak values which have been simultaneously measured. Both of them are one with a certain error. So the x weak value is the polarization weak value and the y weak value is the location weak value of the same photon. And here you see how the weak value is changing as a function of what is called the post selection angle. I was part of the team that made the first experiment um, on the quantum Cheshire cat about 10 years ago, that was with neutrons. At that time, um, we were not able to implement couplings on both arms. So we made a first run by just having a coupling here uh, to the special presence on this arm, then we got some results. Then we would make a different run, uh, preparing the particle in the same state, but making a coupling here on, only on this arm so that we kind of inferred after um, collecting different uh, results uh, of different runs uh, that there was some effect. But uh, th this is different because the present experiment is a direct and ambiguous proof uh, that a quantum particle um, can be measured non-destructively at two different spatial locations and we can even couple uh, pointers to two different properties of the same particle and that could be useful for future technological applications. Yes, so this novel and intriguing quantum effect has wide-ranging conceptual implications 
apart from opening up avenues for applications in areas like revealing macroscopic quantumness and also for quantum sensing. By separating these particle-like properties in two arms of an interferometer, we have been able to see both particle and wave-like properties in the same run of the experiment. In a limited sense using weak measurements, but still it throws new light on Bohr's complementarity principle.